Watchtower Secret Doctrine, The Little Season, and Second Death. Well, yesterday I was driving in my car, doing some shopping before the snowstorm, and <clears throat> a comment I made crossed my mind. Um, I do a lot of uh, looking through other people's uh, videos, um, activists uh, against Watchtower, and sometimes in the comments sections, uh, discussions um, form, and a discussion formed around a comment I made regarding second death. Now, second death is a teaching that has been a long-standing teaching with the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. In fact, it started with Charles Taze Russell back in the earliest of days of Russell's studies, even in, before he uh, became associated with Nelson Barber, and lasted... Uh, at least through the 1950s, and I, I did quite a bit of research in uh, yearbooks looking at uh, daily texts at the end of the yearbooks, uh, doing searches for the term second death, and uh, it's present, and it's present in the same form that I understood it to be in uh, as a Bible student. <clears throat> So I noticed today that most Jehovah's Witnesses don't know anything about the second death. And so um, at one point, uh, uh, more than a year ago, I made a video on this topic, and uh, it was a bit popular, so I thought I'd remake it and... Uh, just some thoughts came rambling through my head uh, during the car ride, so I, I videotaped it. And so, for the first time, you get to see me, which is no great thing. And secondly, uh, you get to hear a teaching that the governing body would rather not have any Jehovah's Witness uh, understand. Uh, they do, if you go to JW Library and JW Org, they do mention Second Death. They do mention the Little Season. They don't call it the Little Season, uh, but it is all from Revelation 20, and that's what my discussion centers around. What happens during the thousand years and afterwards, especially afterwards, because the governing body wants you to think that you're home free. Once you make it through Armageddon, you're loyal. You've gone through the Great Tribulation and you passed all the trials and Jehovah protected you and you made it into Armageddon. Well, it ain't over, brother, <laughs> because there's the little season when Satan's let loose uh, after the thousand years. So... Um, I'll let the, the rest of the video uh, explain uh, the doctrine. And um, if you're a Jehovah's Witness watching this, I do urge you to ask your elders about this. Uh, little season and uh, second death. So here goes the video. Hi, True Seeker here. And this is uh, the first time I have made a video where I'm not just a voice behind a picture or a photo or a still. And I think it's sometimes nice for people to see the face behind the voice. <coughs> At least I know. Uh, I have that preference. But what I'm in interested in talking about today is uh, 
really something that it was a YouTube video that I made um, some uh, time ago uh, taken off the internet and uh, by me and uh, I thought it was apropos to put it back on again I'd like to even though I'm an atheist I uh, like to argue uh, things from a biblical point of view sometimes uh, where uh, the belief systems of the religion contradict themselves especially in the case of Watchtower. When I was a uh, raised uh, Bible student we had a doctrine called second death and second death was um, the term applied to those who were consecrated and baptized. Uh, witnesses today would call them the anointed uh, and had devoted their lives to uh, becoming uh, one of the 144,000. And uh, if they failed uh, to do so, and let's say they left their religious beliefs um, for another set of uh, beliefs, then they have forfeited their lives forever, or they are called second death. You see, the term second death comes from the first death, which is Adamic death, death that, that was inherited according to Watchtower's teachings and Charles Russell's teachings, a death that was in, everybody inherited from Adam and Eve's sin in the Garden of Eden. Well, the, the governing body, um, okay, well, let's, let's take one step back. Um, the Bible students and Russell's teachings were that all people would come back in the thousand years they'd be resurrected, all those that died, and they would have an opportunity to learn the truth. And God would judge them during the thousand years for life, or, or whether or not they, they go into second death. And uh, that would transpire throughout the thousand years. And Bible students believed uh, that uh, each person, each individual, would have a hundred years at a minimum of uh, being tested or, or tried uh, in the thousand years. Well, the governing body and what Watchtower teaches today uh, contradicts a teaching that they don't like to, to emphasize. Um, regarding what is called, or what Bible students call the Little Season. What Watchtower and the governing body would like their believers and their followers to, to believe is that if they remain loyal, if they remain faithful, they will uh, be, they will be saved by God, by Jehovah, uh, from the uh, terrible things uh, that happened in Armageddon. Uh, I like the way Telltale Atheist uh, says uh, he's going to lie in his bunker with uh, Jehovah's Witnesses to uh, save himself from <laughs> from God's wrath in Armageddon. But they believe that only the Jehovah's Witnesses out of seven and a half billion people uh, will uh, make it through Armageddon, God, Jehovah's protection, and that uh, from that point on will be paradise once they clean up the seven and a half billion uh, dead bodies uh, from the, the, you know, the bodies that the birds uh, can't clean up. So uh, <clears throat> from that point on, it's paradise. And they're going to see their loved ones in the resurrection and it's all nice and good and everything. Uh, one thing they don't talk about at all is Revelation 20. Uh, Revelation 20 talks about uh, the thousand year kingdom when uh, Jesus and the 144,000 um, rule uh, in God's kingdom 
Jesus is king and the, the uh, 144,000 are the priests, kings and priests uh, that rule under Jesus. And uh, they sit on thrones, according to uh, Revelation 20, for the thousand year period, judging the earth and ruling the earth. And Satan is bound and thrown into, in the King James Version, he's thrown into a bottomless pit. But in other words, he's, he's made inactive, he's, he's uh, in prison for the entire thousand years. But then Revelation 20 goes on to say that after the thousand years that Satan has let loose once again on the earth. And he goes uh, through throughout the earth, the four quarters of the earth, to gather Gog and Magog. Now Gog and Magog are um, what Watchtower teaches are governments that, that um, uh, in the time of tribulation uh, persecute religion. Anybody who is religious, especially those uh, that are Jehovah's Witnesses. But anybody who uh, claims to be religious will be persecuted by the governments of this world which are represented by Gog and Magog. Well, at the end of the thousand years of judgment um, in Revelation 20, uh, Satan is loose from his prison when he goes out to gather uh, uh, his forces, Gog and Magog, at the end of the thousand years. And it says in the King James Version, the number the number of which is as the sands of the sea. And they lay siege upon the holy city and uh, they, they lay siege on the camp of the saints. Uh, that's the King James uh, Version, but uh, the New World Version has some similar thought. Now, this is a big number uh, as the sands of the sea. This means that Satan is very successful in gathering uh, from after a thousand years of righteous rule, after a thousand years where the 144,000 and Jesus reign in righteousness in which uh, no man uh, does any harm to any other man. They live in a paradise world. They're eating fruit. Uh, they, they have pet tigers and, uh, and everybody is all happy and gay. And uh, not gay in the <laughs> homosexual sense, but happy sense, um, according to Watchtower. But um, they, uh, after this long period of time in which mankind or humankind uh, are subject to the, the best conditions possible, Satan goes out and manages to deceive this humongous number of people who who rebel against God's order, God's kingdom, and lay siege to the camp of the saints. And it says, then God, Jehovah, rains fire down upon them, and this is the ultimate end. And uh, they go into the lake of fire, and they're destroyed forever and ever amen and the remnant of the people who are left uh, you know go on supposedly forever uh, happy uh, God has uh, opened the books of life and written their names in the books of life and so on well that's not the happy world that the governing body teaches uh, you know you're not home free if you make it through Armageddon you got to get through the little season. You see, the thousand years begins with a bloodbath called Armageddon and ends with a bloodbath called the little season for no other better nomenclature. That's what the Bible students called it. That's what Charles Taze Russell called it. And that's what Rutherford and other uh, leaders of the Watchtower knew uh, and would 
would call that period of time. You don't hear the current governing body talking about that period of time at all. So they're, they're, not, they're not coming clean with their, their members. And so they, they're letting their members think that everything is going to be rosy. But it seems to me that with the seven and a half billion people that die in Armageddon and this innumerable, the, is, uh, the number of which is as the sands of the sea. And if you go to a beach and you try to count the grains of sand on a small beach, you're going to have a little trouble. And so uh, we're not talking about a small number here. We're talking about a gargantuan number of people who join Satan at the end of this thousand years. And the thousand years is supposed to be idyllic. It's supposed to be the most perfect time that anybody ever knew in the history of the world since Adam and Eve. And so how successful is God's loving plan? If, if the vast majority of humankind dies, that they, they can't be trusted enough to, to, to remain good and to uphold God's standards of righteousness. If humankind dies in mass, as the Bible suggests, is the way the Watchtower teaches, but then maybe God made a mistake. It doesn't sound like God, you know, is too terribly successful. So that's all I wanted to say. I think that, you know, Watchtower hasn't come clean with its followers. Uh, they mislead people. Uh, they, that's no great surprise. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, I think anybody who is a Jehovah's Witness should ask their elder. You know, what's the second death business? It's in the Bible. Could you please explain it to me? Um, when I looked up under JW Org and in the JW Library, I only found a couple of references to the second death. And so they're not going to have a lot to say on that. They're going to tell you, oh, trust me, you have nothing to worry about. Well, when people say, trust me, you have nothing to worry about, that's when you have to worry. <laughs> so anyway, that's uh, all I have to say. And that's uh, something I, I think that people really should uh, give consideration to. Uh, I, I personally don't believe in the Bible, but uh, when it comes to... Uh, the deception of Watchtower and making everybody think that they're going to live through this ideal, like, you know, all of their eight million members, that they're going to live through this, this horrible Armageddon and seven and a half billion people are going to die, but they're, they're saved and that they're going to live forever in this idyllic uh, world. Nah, -uh. no, that's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what Watchtower teaches. They just don't want you to know it. And uh, it's, it's their secret that they don't want you to ask about. But talk about it. Hey, look up some old literature. Go back to the, go back to the, um, to the uh, old yearbooks written by Rutherford um, and Knorr in the 1950s. I, I checked them all the way up until 1960. And uh, all the way through the 50s, the, the doctrine of second death uh, was taught. And so um, they knew, they knew what the little season was. Fred Franz, he came from Russell's era. He knew all about that stuff. It's just that they don't want you to think that that you may may not have, uh, you know, you, you, you stay loyal to us and you've got it home free. Uh, that's not it at all. So anyway, Truth Seeker here and um, it's been good talking to you.